I said I was gonna share three tips on how to make Lightroom faster, and then I kind of went through the list and realized there's about five different ways that I could probably um, help some people save some time in Lightroom. So let's get started. I'm gonna see if you can see my screen here, because Periscope is a weird beast. And da -da -da -da, can you see that? Yes, you can. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so the first way that we're going to um, make Lightroom faster is to stop making one-to-one -one previews. Now, this is a little bit weird. This, like one-to-one -one previews, everybody says, oh yeah, you should make one-to-one -one previews. It makes the images load faster from image to image. That's true, but it's only true in library mode. And I don't know about you, but I never work in library mode at all in Lightroom. So that's a little bit weird. And so in library mode, that's kind of useless because it doesn't give you a full detailed rendering. It's going to give you a rough approximation. And so I'm always in develop mode and develop mode, they create the one-to-one -one previews whenever you zoom in on the fly, which means you're never gonna use those one-to-one -one previews that you generated and take so long to create, all right? And there's a couple of um, other tips that we're gonna get to, but first step is to just forget about one-to-one -one previews and use the standard size, or for me, I use a small res size preview because I'm always working in develop mode, all right? Now, the one thing is, hey Dave, what if I use Lightroom to choose which images that I'm gonna keep, right? With all the labels and all that jazz. Well, you know what, that's fine. And, um, but if you really wanna save time, pick up a copy of Photo Mechanic because Photo Mechanic is bomb, all right? So it's way faster. There's no time at all for it to create previews. You can start culling images right away. I don't even use Lightroom for that, and I only import the keepers into Lightroom. If I had to import all the images I took and then use Lightroom to decide which images are in focus and all that, I would probably poke both my eyeballs out very quickly. So don't do that, just quit doing that. So let's go into Lightroom and see how to get rid of the large previews. All right, so here we are. We are going to go into Lightroom and go to Catalog Settings, all right? Now, upon import, they're gonna ask you what, file, um, what size previews you want. And look at this, my standard preview size, I chose the smallest one. And again, that's because I don't use Lightroom to choose which images are sharp, okay? So I would recommend that if you already have a program like Photo Mechanic. And if you do have to use Lightroom to choose the images that you're keeping, my apologies. <laughs> All right, now preview quality, I don't really care because again, I'm not really using these, all right? And definitely automatically discard one-to-one -one previews after one week or else you're gonna bloat your cache size and use up a whole bunch of computer memory on your hard drive space um, and that's not gonna be a good thing. So you definitely wanna purge that every so often, all right? Now, now that we've gotten rid of one-to-one -one previews, upon import, make sure you're not making one-to-one -one previews, just make the little guys and you will one, speed up your import process, and two, not gouge your eyes out. Sweet, okay, let's move on to tip number two. Number two, and this is a super easy way to make Lightroom faster, and that's by increasing the size of your cache. <laughs> and uh, folks, size matters. All right, only in the cache. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go into Lightroom preferences, and this time we're going to go, I believe it's under performance, nope, not under performance, is it under, oh, it's under file handling. Well, what do you know? Now, what we wanna do is go down to this setting here, the maximum size setting. Can you see that? I hope you can. And what that defaults to is one gigabyte. And I don't know about you, but I've got more than one gigabyte that I wanna give Lightroom if it's gonna speed up my time in Lightroom. So I have put mine to 50 gigabytes right now. And um, yeah, I would recommend doing the same if you've got you know a fair chunk of your hard drive free. Then increase this and you will find that Lightroom will fly a little bit faster because it doesn't need to swap its memory all the time. It can keep the previews in its cache and it can keep all your settings in the cache. So cool. So that's a really easy way to speed up your Lightroom. And you know, one other bonus, I, I didn't talk about this and it's not a point on the uh, chart on my mind map, but if you go to performance and if you have Lightroom 6, and I do recommend Lightroom 6, then do make sure that your graphics processor is being used in uh, Lightroom 6. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, now let's go on to number three. 
And this is a, a, a bit of a change for us because when Lightroom 1, 2, and 3 were out, it was really flaky. Like I'm talking about crashing every week, like at least once, okay? And so it was really quite scary to work in Lightroom with all of our images, especially client images. And so we used to recommend writing XMP sidecar files. So even if Lightroom crashed, we would have the information to process the raw files in Adobe Photoshop with the XMP file attached, okay? Well, no longer. I recommend to not write the XMP file with a caveat, okay? As long as one, you don't have one ginormous catalog with all of your images in Lightroom. That is not good because if that catalog gets corrupt, say bye-bye to your life's work, okay? That's not good, okay? So we don't write the XMP sidecar file because if you do, every time you edit an image and you go to the next image, Lightroom says, wait a minute, I've got to record something, I've got to take notes, and I've got to save the XMP file, and then it goes to the next image. And so you're doing this extra step of writing to a different file, the XMP file, where every time you make a change and switch to another image. And so that takes time and that takes memory and that's gonna take, um, just Lightroom, uh, make it, everything feel a little bit slower, okay? So let's turn off this feature by going to Lightroom and again, we're going to go to Lightroom and go down to Catalog Settings. Now under Catalog Settings, if we go into Metadata, here we go. Make sure that this third box here, this is Lightroom 6, the third box says automatically write changes into XMP. Oh, I can't even see that, can you? Corrupt catalog is only an issue if you aren't backing up the catalog. Yes, correct, Eric. So you don't have to really, well, you know what? Hmm. Let's revisit that. You said corrupt catalogs are only an issue if you're not backing up your catalogs. Well, you know, there's a lot of issues with that. <laughs> and the best backup scheme that I can recommend is to never trust one basket. And so even if, let's say, Adobe Lightroom isn't gonna corrupt on that catalog, what if your computer dies? What if you drop it? What if your hard drive is crashed? If that is your only copy of your life's work, that is problematic. And so I would recommend that you back that up onto another computer using automated software, whether it's um, ChronoSync or something else. Every night we've got a scheme, and I should do another Periscope on that, of how uh, when Quinn is done editing today, the day's work, she creates, she actually backs it up to another computer. Now, the question from Parogi, do you create a new catalog for every shoot? Yes, we do. So we create a new catalog per client, and that's easy to archive per client as well. And so, yeah, definitely, Chad, um, I agree, that's the way you should do it because that way everything's archived with the client file. Okay, um, so if there's any more questions, let me know and pause for a second and uh, because I can't see my screen when I'm looking at this screen. <laughs> okay, so anyways, let's go here. Make sure that it's unchecked. And again, the biggest thing for you to know and the recommendation, don't keep all of your images in one big catalog, okay? Create a new catalog you know, and don't make it balloon over 10,000 images or else it's gonna bog down your machine. And again, that's a lot of images to lose as far as the uh, retouching is concerned. All right, now a couple bonuses. Um, and I found this on this website and I'll put a link on it on our Periscope blog site here. But um, don't sharpen lens profile correct or remove noise, especially if, because you can do all these steps on import, these are things that you don't wanna do because what it's gonna to have to do every time you look at that image again in develop mode, it has to render all of that sharpening. It's gotta render all of those profile corrections um, and the noise removal every time you make a change. And so that takes a lot of processing power. And so I recommend not doing this at the, uh, for that as well. Um, and now for the uh, last thing, of course you wanna use Multiboto, man. Mm, yeah, this thing, the skin. <laughs> You knew that was coming, but um, that's about it. I hope that helps somebody out there because uh, Lightroom is kind of our, our lifeline for image editing. And so we use it every day for every job that we do. And um, yeah, man, that's how we make Lightroom faster. So hope you guys enjoyed that. 
Um, there's Queen in the background. Oh, she didn't know that we could see her. <laughs> number one, oh, what's number one again? Number one, stop making one-to-one -one previews. And so you don't need to make one-to-one -one previews unless, because they're not used in anything except for the library mode. And library mode, one-to-one -one previews are useless to me because I'm always in develop mode and I don't use Lightroom to call. I use photo mechanic to call. So God bless guys. We'll see you tomorrow and uh, well, happy Wednesday.